Hi, my name is Andreas Bergtiller, and I'm a principal investigator at the Research Center for Molecular Medicine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna. I trained as a veterinarian and became a basic immunologist. Well, I was a 12-year-old high school kid who already back then wanted to become an animal doctor and who wanted to unravel the mysteries of life, including how to catch a fish. We are trying to address one of the big unsolved questions that seems trivial, but we don't have an answer to this. And this is, why do we die from chronic diseases like cancer? One very interesting observation that has been made over the past decades is that in many cases, in up to 80% of all cancer patients, but also when you think about chronic infections like AIDS or tuberculosis, for example, these patients suffer from a disease called cachexia. And cachexia is a very complex syndrome that affects many different organs, including the fat tissue and muscle. And the most obvious sign is that those patients lose weight. They waste away, the they lose body, body strength and, and, and muscle and fat mass. And um, we really don't know the underlying mechanisms. And for that reason also, there's no therapy yet so far to actually prevent or ameliorate cachexia. What we do know is that there are many different organs that are involved, the fat tissue, the muscle, and also there is the speculation that there are other players that are orchestrating these processes. The immune system likely plays a role, maybe the microbiota in the gut, maybe and most likely also metabolism, or also the brain. We like to understand who is actually orchestrating and behind this uh, very complex disease, cachexia, um, to prevent and interfere with this syndrome, and by that, um, possibly helping many patients that suffer from terminal cancer or chronic infections. It's this. It's an immune cell called a killer T cell, which we found for the first time to be involved in causing cachexia. And we could show that these killer T cells, which usually with their receptors on the surface, they would recognize an infected cell and kill it, uh, that these T cells are actually also having another darker side to their life. And that is, they can cause cachexia in the context of infections. This was totally surprising, and we're currently trying to understand how do these T cells interact with the rest of the body, including um, the fat tissue and the muscle cells, and to see whether we can interfere with this crosstalk and communication to ameliorate cachexia. Our hope is that if we find out about cachexia in the context of infections, and which are the mechanisms that drive cachexia, we might be able to extrapolate this to other diseases such as cancer and prevent cachexia from happening. My two and a half year old daughter believes that going to work means riding up the class elevator to the office, playing computer games for the rest of the day, and every now and then getting some sweets from the cafeteria. That's not quite uh, a usual day, of course, but I do like to keep this curiosity-driven mindset of a child and really try to address these why and how questions. So kind of a treasure hunt for the mechanisms of life and particularly diseases. Why did evolution retain cachexia if it's causing so much disease and suffering? And what we believe, and we have some preliminary evidence for that, that in certain disease contexts, such as infection, cachexia might actually be beneficial because it could be an ancient program to rapidly release stored energy in the fat, in the muscle, to fuel the immune response. Since kindergarten, I wanted to become a veterinarian, an animal doctor, and this is what I studied. Yet, as much as I love working with animals, I realized that I really enjoy exploring new things, going to places where no one else has been, and satisfying my curiosity. And in this sense, I really love and cherish a motto that has been printed on the backside of a hippie magazine from the 70s and which was picked up by Steve Jobs at a commencement speech. This motto is very short and crisp and it says, stay hungry, stay foolish.